Guys, I see my first guest of the evening on the line, and to say I am pumped up is, uh, wow, just goosebumps already. I'm going to play a cool track featuring the great Scott Rockenfield. Guys, we are back six four six seven eight seven eight zero two seven. To say I have goosebumps is is beyond belief right now. Uh, to interview this drummer uh, on this show is going to be a treat of mine. That was a great song off the great uh, Rock and Field Spear. That song is called Seven Devils off the Hell's Canyon album. It gives me great pleasure to welcome to Around the Kit the great Scott Rock and Field. Scott, Joe Gant, yeah. Around the Kit. What's up, brother? Hey, Joe. How are you, man? I am pumped up, man. Thank you for giving me some of your time during your tour, man. What's going on today? Listen, it's all good. Hey, by the way, I haven't heard that song in a long time. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> um, super fun, and thank you a lot for playing that, and thanks for having me on the show today. And uh, listen, it's all good. I'm actually in, um, oh, my gosh, where am I? Uh, Chicago, McHenry, Chicago. Illinois. That's yeah. it right and um 
Yeah, we're playing a festival tonight, so in a few hours I'm going to take off and go to the gig. And, you know, we do a show tonight, and we did one just the other night um, uh, in Kadat, uh, Wisconsin, I believe it was, which was mm-hmm. all good. And, um, listen, everything's going super good, man. We're keeping busy, and we're touring the world uh, starting now and forever, it seems. And, uh, you know, I get to enjoy that and I get to make music uh, like what you just played and all sorts of other things that I work on outside of the world of Queensryche. So uh, it's going good, man. So thanks. We appreciate you being there. Guys, uh, Scott Rockenfield has joined us today. I want to go back a little bit. We'll get to the tour and everything. I got so much to get to you. I want to go back a little bit. Um, you were born in the early 60s, started playing drums, I think, 11 years old. So we're now in the early 70s. What was going on, Scott, uh, in Seattle with Scott Rockenfield and drums and your music ju- uh, journey? Yeah, you know, God, I guess I have been doing it for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Joe, you and I probably go back a lot of years together, I'm going to guess. Uh, and, uh, uh, um, God. You know, it's, it's, listen, it's really great. I feel blessed that I've been able to, uh, you know, survive and, and enjoy a career in the music industry and, you know, create things that, uh, that I like to listen to and, and fortunately a lot of other people have enjoyed listening to. And, you know, in the 70s, listen, I was a teenager. You know, I, I graduated from high school in 1981, and I did. I started playing drums right around uh, the age of 11. And, you know, I, I'm self-taught. I never took lessons and did anything like that. So, you know, I basically just, you know, started messing around when I was younger, playing drums and listening to the bands that I enjoyed, like, you know, Judas Priest and Iron Maiden and, you know, all the, all the stuff that kind of pushed me in a kind of a progressive form. You know, I, I, I enjoyed drummers that were really kind of technical. I was a big Rush fan uh, and still am. And, you know, kind of just learned by listening and playing along and uh but it was soon thereafter i was actually 16 or thereabouts when i started you know hooking up with other musicians to uh to play together and i didn't know what i was doing to be honest i'd only been playing for a couple of years but interestingly enough the first person that i ever joined and made a band with was a guy named jeff probst and he's actually Mm -hmm. the host of the tv show survivor yep so he and I go way back to the early days. He used to live in Seattle, and uh, that was kind of the beginning of, you know, being in a band and everything like that. But uh, after uh, we kind of parted ways, you know, he had stuff he wanted to, you know, we just we didn't stay together as a band, but we stayed friends forever. But right after that, I met all the guys, uh, you know, which kind of became Queensryche. You know, I've mm-hmm. known Michael and Eddie now for, fuck, I think it was like 40 years or something like that. We've right. known each other. And we all just started playing together. And, you know, we eventually formed the Queensryche thing when I was 17. And we yeah. made our first EP together. And then I graduated high school. Um, and when I graduated high school and the EP had just been released, uh, we went on tour um, with Twisted Sister in the United States. And ever since then, I, I think I've lived on the road ever since then, to be honest. So, great, great. Yeah, good. Just, just, yeah, great stuff, guys. We're talking to the great Scott and Field, uh, great Scott Rock and Field. You know, I read about your parents and how your parents were influential, uh, uh, and I want to talk about the dungeon also. But uh, your parents were influential um, with your early playing, even having sleepovers with all all the musicians. What kind of values did your parents set with you, Scott? And do you try to convey the same values in life today? Well, you know, I do. And thanks, because my parents were definitely, you know, influential. And I've got a great relationship with them. They actually still live in the same house uh, in the Seattle area where the dungeon is. So the dungeon (laughs) that we started Queensryche in, which was basically the basement downstairs, it's still there. And there's still all the memorabilia from when I was 15 and all through the years of Queens rec, we actually rehearsed and wrote records in that basement up until promised land of 1994. Right. So there's all sorts of fun stuff down there, but uh, they were great. You know, my parents let me do 
what I wanted to do. You know, they just, they allowed me and they encouraged me to follow my heart and do what I had a passion for. And I think they just knew that I was such a driven kid and I always, uh, you know, strive to achieve everything that I liked. And I, and I liked playing drums and I wanted to be in a band and they saw that. And so they, they never stopped me. They allowed me to do it. And yeah, they let us be a rock band in that house for 20 something years. And, um, you know, I, that's kind of hard to, uh, you know, it's kind of priceless, you know, that type of uh, uh, inspiration, you know, from the parents end of things. And uh, so I do. I do the same thing now with my own kids. You know, I've got, you know, grown up kids now. My youngest is 17 almost. And mm -hmm. I'm letting them choose what they want to do in life. And I try to support them in everything that they that they like and that they want to do. And I, I think that's kind of important. And I think fortunately they've learned that from me and they've seen what it did for me and my parents. And I have a great relationship with my kids and they're really good achievers. You know, my daughter's in medical school right now and my, uh, my youngest who's 17, he's going to be graduating here in two years mm -hmm. and they're all driven and ready to go. And uh, so, so, so far so good. It's working for me. <laughs> great, great stuff. Scott, you mentioned your family, and you seem like you're just so into your kids, uh, really, they're, they're your life. Uh, and we talk about our children. I have a nine-year-old daughter, and she is my everything. But I want her to learn and experience life, Scott. I don't want to set this timetable for her. I want her to uh, choose her path. And I also want her to make mistakes. I think making mistakes in life, Scott, uh, we don't want to do it, but I think they're important to, you know, to success. Well, I certainly agree with that. I mean, I, you know, if we don't have the mistakes, we don't know what we've learned to avoid those again. I, I, I totally agree with you that, you know, you have to kind of go through those things, you know, and I think that's a great balance in life. And I certainly have, I, listen, I continue to make mistakes to this day. I think we probably right. all do. Sure. And what do we learn from those, you know? And I try to teach that to my kids, and it sounds like you kind of do the same thing. And I think, you know, that becomes – I think mistakes, you know, uh, help us generate the wisdom that we're supposed to have later in life. Um, and so I like that. Yeah, I do. Absolutely. Uh we get to this great epic album, and I know your your guy your guy is Neil Peart, and my guy Scott for the last 33 years has been Scott Rockenfield. I just wanted to tell you that, and thank you for the last 33 years. So your guy is Neil, my guy is you. Um, moving pictures. I know you love this great. I call it a groundbreaking album. It's an epic album. What is it about moving pictures that moves Scott Rockenfield so much? Yeah, you know, I, yeah. and thank you. And, and I, you know, it's nice to have influences and to have things and people that inspire us in life. Mm -hmm. And I'm certainly, I've been a huge, uh, uh, I've been hugely inspired by, you know, the guys in Rush and certainly by Neil as a, you know, as a, one as a drummer and, and, you know, also as a songwriter, you know, he's a super yeah. talented songwriter and he's, a, he's a pleasant guy to be with, you know, we've met on several occasions and, and talked about a bunch of stuff. And he's, you know, I, I like that type of personality. Um, you know, I, I think uh, moving pictures for me was just a great defining moment when I was, you know, younger. It came out in the early 80s. And I just, I thought it was the one of the most solid bodies of work that, that I, as a fan, enjoyed by Rush. And I think it's still my favorite to this day. And I just think that it just had everything contained within it that felt right to me, the song craft and the feel, the sound of the record. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's kind of hard to explain sometimes, but I, I liked it. I thought there was some great, uh, there's some, you know, they wrote really great songs. They were easy for me to digest. And I liked that about them. And I thought that was super solid. And, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to have favorites in life. You know, I think Rush's catalog, for example, is a massively inspiring body of work for the, 40 something plus years that they keep doing it and right. have. And I think that's fantastic. But moving pictures has always been one of my favorites. Guys, we're talking to the great Scott Rockenfield. Well, you mentioned 40 years. You've been in Queens, right? About 35 years now. And my first recollection, it was winter and I heard 
Lady War Black, and it's been my favorite band ever. And it's just a tremendous work of art, the EP to now. And we mentioned drum sounds with Neil. My question to you is pretty much, Scott, every Queensryche release from the EP till now has had a different drum sound. And I like that. Some bands stay with the same sound. Talk to me about the sound of your drums on the album and how each album has different tastes. Well, you know, I think it's just something that we always found that we enjoyed as a band together. When we started making music in the early days uh, and then started to progress through the career of making, you know, every record after the first one, we always like to push ourselves and, and challenge ourselves musically, but also to present uh, whatever that music was doing at the time, uh, there was a sound that we wanted to achieve to help develop it and to uh, to present it. And I think that for us, we just always kept things open. You know, we worked with different producers, uh, which would bring in different sounds. We worked with different engineers that would also bring in a different type of sound. And I was never married to one type of sound for myself. I wanted to see what would be important for the record at a given time. And, and I think for us, that's just something we've always left open. And I think as we have progressed through the years, we continue to do that. You know, our record that we put out last year, which is our most recent one, Condition Human, you know, we worked with uh, Chris Harris, uh, who goes by the name of Zeus. And, you know, he brought something else to the, the party, so to speak. And we were able to kind of develop a new sound of his and mine combined. And, it's a fun process, and I think it just keeps me fresh, and I think it keeps our music fresh, and I think our fans have enjoyed that through the years, too, and I think we're blessed that our fans do let us do that um, so that we can just kind of, you know, it'd be like painting a painting over and over again, but just using the same colors every time, mm -hmm. and I don't think I would be interested in doing that, and so we just kind of keep pushing ourselves and seeing what we come up with. And we have loved the push for the last 35 years. Um, um, I've been playing drums almost 35 years, and I've been in many bands. And to me personally, Scott, I always want to get that connection with the bass player. It's so important. I've, I'll go practice, we'll practice for three hours, just me and the bass player. Talk to me about this tremendous bass player who you've been uh, just playing in a band with, Eddie Jackson, and the connection you have and is it special to have that connection like I had? Well, I think so. You know, I think our chemistry together has certainly, uh, you know, it started out fresh in the early days. And I think our development and our evolvement through the years together has kept it fresh as well. And the nice thing about all of us uh, together, but definitely for Eddie and I, is the kind of the solid foundation of the, the bass and the drums. We always liked the the tight syncopated, um, you know, stay together and develop those parts together that felt really solid. And I think that's really added a lot to our music. And I think we were fans of bands that did stuff like that, but I think we took it to a level that was just Queensryche. And it's been something that I think really adds to the foundation of, of our music on record, but also for us to perform live. And, you know, I think we keep doing that. And that's fun to me. And I think it, 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 it opens up the music a lot so that we can all do a different thing and the music tends to sit together well and we're able to craft songs together, kind of knowing that process now. You know, it's taken a while for us to learn those things from the beginning. But it was just a direction that we just both felt was the best for us to do. Great stuff. I call it a perfect fit, uh, guys. We're talking to the great Scott Rockenfield. You know, over the last 35 years in the business or whatever it's been, what have you learned about yourself, Scott, that you didn't know before? I learned I don't know how to do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> but so, uh, That's fine. My, uh, That's you know, fine, brother. That's like, good. <laughs> to, go, uh, to go look for a, a quote-unquote day job or a real <laughs> job, um, I'm not sure I, I have the talent to do that. Um, <laughs> no, listen, I, I think I've learned that – I know what I have learned. I've learned that I have a lot more to learn, and mm -hmm. I like that. I like that I'm constantly kind of a work in progress. You know, life to me is a work in progress, and I think for me I like to know that I don't know everything, and I'm always looking for ways to learn more and to push myself. 
whether it's in life or, or in, certainly in the music that I do within the band or even outside of the band. You know, I do a lot of music outside of Queensryche for films and uh, film trailers. I do a lot of that type of stuff that a lot of people probably don't even know about. And it's super challenging. And it uh, has its all, all of its own sets of rules. And I'm learning everything as I go. Um, but I think life is just always full of new things every day. And I just try to absorb it all. And I think I've, you know, I think when I was younger, we all think we know everything, but I certainly know that I don't know everything and I still don't know everything. And I like to know that I'm attempting to continue to learn as much as possible while I'm here on this earth. And I think that's important for me. Absolutely. Um, I always try to be honest with everything in life, and sometimes it gets me in trouble because uh, people don't want to hear honesty sometimes, and I think we should always be honest, especially in music. Um, what should we always try to convey when we're trying to be honest with somebody and that person doesn't want to accept it? Well, I think, yeah, that's, and I, there's certainly a few of those out there, isn't there? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I've probably been one at some point in my life, too, where you're right. right. A lot of us don't, you know, honesty can be really great or, I mean, I think it's always really great, but it depends on how it's perceived or how other people are at a certain point where they want to, you know, accept the honesty or not. And so I think we all have our times where, uh, you know, honesty is an interesting thing. But I agree with you. I think being honest is a cool place to go. And I think it's just important that I think we should do honesty, like you're saying. And it's not always easy. It's probably harder to be honest all the time than it would be to be the other way around. But I think it's just a great way to learn. You know, if you're honest with people or people are honest to you, I think that's for me, that's where I'm trying to learn more and more about myself is, you know, is to just self-reflect. If somebody has an honest comment to me, and if it's something that I don't really, I wasn't really aware of, or it rubs me a different way, I try to step back and take a look at that and at myself right. at why, what is it, why am I feeling that way? And, and what am I going to learn from that? And, and why do I feel that way? And, you know, I think those things are every day in life. We have to constantly take a look at ourselves in the mirror. And maybe the honesty thing is a big portion of that, you know? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, looking, looking in the mirror, uh, it, one thing the mirror never does, Scott, it never lies. It never lies to ah. you. Uh, great stuff. Right. <laughs> um, double bass or double pedal? What do you prefer? You know, I actually have both, you know, when we're playing right. live right now. Um, you know, I've got a big kid on the tour out here. It's all double bass drum. But uh, I have a studio back in uh, back at my place in Seattle, a super nice studio that I do a lot of recording at. Uh, and that, that drum kit actually is a uh, single kick drum with a double pedal on it. Um, so to me, it just kind of depends on what my needs are at the time. And I seem to just be able to make them both work. And I think it's kind of fun to kind of go between the two it keeps me fresh and i kind of think things differently on both of the both of those types of drum kits and um so i don't know i just for me i kind of like variety every now and then mm -hmm. seems to work great stuff and over the years i don't want to get into names because i'm not that kind of person i don't want to say this and that but over the years you've played uh i'd say three or four maybe five different drum brands uh has it been a personal personal preference? Has it been an endorsement deal? You know, what has been going on with the, the different changes, or you just like to change? Well, you know, I think after so many years and years, it kind of depends on the situation and, and or the individual. Right. Uh, you're right. Drums, you know, I started out playing, you know, Ludwig's way back in the early days, and then I was a Tama guy for quite a long time, and uh, I went to D-Drum for many years, and uh, I'm currently at Pearl, which I was back in the 90s for quite a while, and then I went off to D-Drum for a while, but then now I'm back with Pearl again, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's all about relationships, and, and, and yes, you're correct, a bit of variety and timing, you know, some people, like, the companies change, you know, like the, uh, yeah. the artist rep, reps will change at a certain company, and that might be a time when... Um, I may have chosen to, you know, explore other avenues, but then I'll come back. And, you know, I, I always, I, 
my formula for all of that, though, is always have great relationships, never burn bridges, and always do things like you were saying, honestly. You know, I just, you're just honest with people, and that's always worked for me, and everybody has always, I think, held that with a lot of respect back to me. That's why I think I was able to do a lot of those, you know, tried all the different drum companies. Um, but that's an interesting example because the flip of that is, you know, I've been a Peisty cymbal yes. guy now for – since 1981 or something. And I think right. Nico from Nico from Iron Maiden and me are, I, I believe were the two longest Pisces endorsers in the history of Pisces. Yeah. So and, I've, I've stuck with them for a long time. So like I said, it kind of depends on the gear and the situation and everything, but uh, I've been blessed no matter how you want to look at it. It's very nice to be honored with companies that, are very successful and they, they take really good care of you. And I certainly have been taken really good care of for many, many years by all of the companies that I've been with. And uh, it's always a fun ride, you know, cause it's not easy. And, you know, they have a, they have a lot, you know, there's a lot of drummers and a lot of artists that want endorsements and there's a lot of great talent out there. And I'm just happy to be a part of the entire river that flows in this industry. And, you know, other than that, um, I close my eyes and go on stage every night, and hopefully I play correctly. <laughs> yeah. oh. I do. That's always the bigger question is, you know, am I going to have a good show tonight? <laughs> right? Absolutely. And uh, I've seen you guys about 22 times. And, Scott, you have never, ever let me down. I just got to tell you that, man. I, I, You know, I have friends of mine who we talk about, great live bands, and I think Queensryche for me has been that great live band. Talk to me about when you go on stage. Are you a different person? Uh, do you try to convey yourself different? Uh, do you get really, uh, you know, in this zone? Well, it's interesting because I think I get so far sometimes into the zone that I actually forget that I just played a show. You know, like when you're <laughs> driving and, you know, you forget the last yeah. five miles when you're driving yeah. home because you're kind of daydreaming or whatever. and. <laughs> It's a funny thing that, and maybe that's a blessing in disguise for us live. I don't know. I, I, I feel very confident that we're so together and we've been together for so long that, you know, we're able to just carry carry each other through everything. And, you know, and, and so I, I do. I kind of just get in the zone. And maybe that zone is just knowing that I'm going to be okay and I'm going to do my best. And it's not always perfect. And things break or stuff happens, or, you know, you may not be feeling 100% or, you know, whatever. Uh, but, you know, you get through it, and I think the majority of everything has always been really great for us, and that's a great thing, knock on, you know, knock on wood. And I think our fans are kind of the same way, you know. They understand, you know, we do like 100-something shows a year around the world, and, um, you know, you're bound to have weird nights every now and then, that's for sure. sure. Yeah. But you just get through it, and you just have fun. And uh, I, uh, I just enjoy the feedback. You know, watch the fans. You can see their expression. You can hear their, uh, uh, their, they're either having fun or they're not. But I think fortunately, they usually have fun with us, and so we just, we just have fun back. You know, great, great stuff, guys. We're talking to the great Scott Rockenfield. You know, Scott, um, I had made this shirt up because. Uh, uh, I've been as I'm getting older. I think I'm getting smarter. I'm not sure. I'm trying to get smarter and wiser. But ever since my daughter was born nine years ago, I'm a different person, and I try to surround myself with positive people. And I made this saying: surround yourself with positive people. Don't let negative people surround you. Do you have that with your wife, Misty? Is she always in your corner? Can you always count on her? Well, you know, it's funny. I listen. I like your shirt, by the way. I want to. Where do I get one of those? <laughs> what size are you? What size are you? <laughs> <laughs> You're funny, right? Because listen, that and I, I, I actually have a lot of respect that you went. If you actually had a shirt made, that means that 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 type of thing is important to you. And I think for uh -huh. me, I absolutely agree. I because I think maybe for me, if you you know. People are people. We're all certainly different, and we all have different things in life. And I don't believe that anybody is any different or any better, um, uh, I mean, than anybody else. You know, I, I, 
go through life trying to be a better person on my own every day, but I certainly don't like to be around negativity and other things like that. And I, uh, I find that, that that's, it sucks the life out of me. It takes, it's the wrong energy. And uh, so I just choose to be kind of like you. I try to surround myself every day with everything that's positive. And I keep, uh, I keep my friends at a very small handful. I don't have a lot of people that I hang out with. And, um, you know, I keep it super tight when I'm back at home. And I think in doing that, you know, I just, it's a, it's a small circle of trust and it's, and it's all positive, you know, I, and I find that that's really uh, exciting for me. And you kind of sound like the same type of thing. And I certainly have done that. My family has always been like that. My parents, you know, my brother and sister who are married and have, you know, families of their own, they all live in the Seattle area near where I'm at. And it's always a good energy around everybody. And I think, you know, I think that's the best way. And if I, you're probably like me. If you find a negative thing that's going on, you kind of steer the other way. And uh, well, I kind of do that. I kind of do that in life too. You know. Well, you know what, Scott? Um, I try so much to every day. I wake up and I always. I have this new uh, facet in life. I want to make today better than yesterday. And my show is doing great. I have a goal for this show. I want to be on a certain platform one day. And I think I'm going to get there. But in the meantime. I am. I have no problem, Scott, doing the hard work. Uh, the hard work is what gets you to that platform. But if I'm around somebody negative, Scott, it's going to, like you said, it's going to suck the life out of me. And I think eventually, if I'm around five guys that are negative, I will become negative. So I try to just always get away from that and just try to, If I'm and I'm by myself a lot, like you. So I don't want to be around that negative force. It's not in my life. I don't want to be brought down, you know? Yeah, I totally agree. You know, and I, it, 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 I mean, I, I don't know how else to better define it. I mean, your explanation you know, is perfectly defined for what I believe as well. And so I'm with you on that. I, I agree. That's why I, I keep things as tight as possible with the people that I know and that I hang out with. And I'm very selective about what I choose to do and who I choose to be around. And uh, maybe, you know, maybe both of us have learned what that means for us. And so we're able to make those choices now better than maybe we did in the past. And I've, I've had to clean house a bit, you know, when it comes to people in my life and right. realizing that they weren't the right thing for me. And maybe I didn't know it at the time, but I certainly am trying to get better at knowing what is, what's affecting me either positively or negatively. And when it comes to people, I've gotten pretty good, and you probably have too, at knowing what is right for you and what is not good for you, and you just choose to pick the right ones, you know, and stay with those ones. And uh, I think that's good, and I think it's something that I'm trying to teach to my kids as well, and I think they see that as well when they know that I don't have a lot of people I hang out with, but I'm selective about the best ones that work for me and that we've been friends for a long time type of thing, you know? Absolutely. I know you were into music and film score, even in Redmond High School uh, a long time ago. Uh, but, you know, a drummer, people think a drummer just, you know, we're drummers. Uh, I, I do a lot of songs, too. I write music and I compose lyrics, so I like that. Was it important for Scott Rockenfield to come from behind the set and convey yourself with you know, everything you're doing with Paul Spear and the movies and the video games? Was it important for you to, you know, take that step? Well, it was, and interestingly enough, I've actually been doing that. You know, I mean, I started uh, building a composing studio for myself back in the early 80s. Uh, you know, I was buying all sorts of keyboard gear, and I was really into it back then, and I hadn't done any work on anything specific for a, quite a long time, but it was a big passion of mine and still is. So it's been a career for me in terms of learning it and teaching myself what was important about that different aspect of my life of not being just a drummer, but, you know, composing music and writing for films and, you know, some of the big video games that are out these days. And, you know, I'm sitting in front of my computer right now, for example, in my hotel room, cause I'm working on, you know, a huge A-list film trailer um, mm -hmm. right now. I've done a bunch of that in the past. And so I'm completing some work for Sony films right now on something that's going to be coming up here soon. And, it's just, it's different. It's a big challenge for me, but it, it, it's, for me personally, it was important because it, it just, it was, 
it's a field that's just different. Drums are playing drums and doing the band thing is super cool, but mm. I, I kind of need to have this other facet because it's really, yeah. it kind of helps me develop everything even better in my life. You know, I, I'm a better drummer because I write for films, you know, writing an orchestra and all the parts for an orchestra for a film, you know, is so different than writing just drums and rock band uh, type of thing. Um, but they both teach each other some. I think that's important for me as a, as just a musical composer. And I kind of, I bring those elements into Queens right now because I think it's been a great tool for me, but what I've learned in Queens, right. Is also what I, I'm able to apply in some of the music I do for films and the video games. So um, it's been a good thing for me. And I, you know, I don't know about other people, but it's super important to me. I think I would go crazy if I didn't actually do that. <laughs> you know? I'm, I'm like a, I'm like a, you know, it's like a super amazing hobby. I mean, not really, because I make a pretty good living at doing it, and I'm working right. on some big things these days. But it was just a passion for me, and I think I'm so passionate about it. I wake up every day, and I'm in my studio, and I work every day. That's all I do when I'm home, besides hanging out with my family and, you know, a little playtime every now and then. But other than that, I'm a junkie for working on music and getting to know people in Hollywood and working on, you know – some big fun stuff these days and uh you know i can't complain you know it's nice great great, great stuff scott talk to me about uh 2000 this great great uh album hell's canyon with the great paul spear and my favorite track snake dance <laughs> well wow you know like i said i haven't listened to some of that stuff for quite a while and it's it's awesome every time i hear it it's like wow that was a lot of fun yeah that whole era, you know, I, my buddy, Paul Spear, he lived in the Seattle area and we knew each other for many years. He's a great talented guitar player and he was a producer on many, many projects in his career and still is. Uh, but we got to know each other back in the mid nineties and decided to make a, make a first project together in 1997. We got offered to do instrumental music together for a, uh, a, a, a an hour-long animated film that was being made uh, called Televoid, and we got hired to do all the instrumental music. So we started jamming together and doing uh, our style, which is instrumental, kind of progressive, atmospheric, you know, music type of thing. And we got nominated for a Grammy for that project wow. together. Yep. So we decided to do another one, which was the follow-up uh, together. It was the only two things we've done. And the follow-up was called Hell's Canyon, like you said. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was just more of us wanting to have fun together and put, you know, make music. And maybe hopefully some, you know, our fans would enjoy it. And I think they did. And we got some great feedback from it. And a lot of people to this day still listen to it constantly and, you know, that was kind of the beginning for me. I'm the Grammy nomination in 1997 for Televoid, you yeah. know, was outside of anything I'd ever done in Queensryche. And that was kind of the beginning of projects where I was actually getting paid to do things. Mm -hmm. You know, I got paid to score the music for that project. And after that, I, you know, started working on more films and video games came up and it just opened up a lot of opportunities for me. And uh, so... Paul and I, you know, we don't see each other a lot because he moved to Nashville and I've been busy doing things for years and years as well. But when we do, when we do talk and everything, it's, we always reflect back on, you know, the days when, you know, cer certain elements of your life open up bigger opportunities and, you know, the glory you had together doing that stuff is, it's a fun, they're, they're great memories for us to have. And uh, hopefully one of these days he and I can get together and just, do something new again. It's all about scheduling at this point. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But it's fun. Man. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot for playing it, you know, on the show and everything. Oh, I love it. I, I, I have it in my iPod. Uh, great stuff. Uh, just tremendous. Guys, we're talking to the great Scott Rockefeller. You know, a couple of years back, I, I the, the Queen's right catalog is very special to me. Uh, and I about 10 years ago, whatever, I heard a song called Chasing Blue Sky. And I like, what is this? It's so different. It's got this country feel and then the, the, the warmth in the vocals. 
Talk to me about Chasing Blue Sky, and I think you had a hand in writing that, correct? Well, I did. You know, it's fun. That's a, listen, that was a lot of, that song was a lot of fun. And that song right. actually was on the Televoid project I was mentioning yes. in 97. Yes. Chasing Blue Sky was one of the songs that was on that. Um, but it was also a Queensryche song that uh, made it onto one of our records. So, um, you know, uh, listen, I've been writing music for a long time, but that was one of the first songs that uh, um, the band Queensryche back in the mid nineties, you know, they liked it so much that they decided, you know, we all decided to record it. And I think it ended up as a, uh, a bonus track on like the Japan release of promised land or something like that. I can't even remember where it ended up, but I know it was done. We recorded it. Uh, but yeah, I wrote all the music for that, uh, all the guitar parts and everything. And, you know, I've been doing all that stuff for years and years. Um, some people just don't know that much about it. That's all. But right. it's fun. I like doing all that stuff. And, you know, I currently keep doing all of that. You know, we're making a new record right now. We're writing songs for the next Queen Jones record, which we're going to hopefully start recording sometime at the beginning of the new year coming up. And, um, you know, I write guitar parts and full songs and you know we present them to each other and then we all see if we like what we're doing and then we all kind of find a path and if we like everything uh, we all play it you know and that's kind of how chasing blue sky became and mm. you're right it's a fun song and i think a lot of people once they find it or if, or if, they, if they've had it a lot of people have really enjoyed um you know a lot of those pieces of music that i've had a, a lot of hands in but uh that's a fun song you're very yeah, educated. Great. You know a lot of wacky things about my underlying history of my music and everything. I kind of like that about you. <laughs> well, Scott, you're right. And, and and you know what? And I'm not going to bullshit you. You could ask my, my family, uh, my brothers and sisters, all my friends. Queensryche has been that band for me since t uh, Lady War Black. And it's just been – and you're right – but it's good to have that in life, Scott, isn't it? That that person or that 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 one project that you take to, and you want to find out everything, and you do your homework, and you do all the work that you know, you know, brings this great music out. I think it's good to have that 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 one person or that one band in your life, you know. Well, you know, I think so, and I think you know those are the as we go certainly later, you know, as I've gone through my years and if you know, progress musically, but also just, you know, I've gotten older and, you know, I've experienced a lot more things. I, I'm kind of like you. I, I still have those certain special things that still are really strong to me, like, you know, records that we enjoyed or moments of time that meant something that were associated with music at that time, you know, a certain record that you liked or something that inspired you. And uh, you obviously have that in your life. And I certainly have mine too. And I think, uh, you know, it's a fun thing. I think sometimes it grounds me, you know, like if I'm, you know, you know, you get, you know, as you go through life, you know, you have good days, you have bad days, you know, you, life is just full of all sorts of fun things you deal with. Um, but those are great things to kind of, sometimes they, they ground me. Like if I need something out, maybe I'll just sit back and pull up my catalog of stuff I have on my computer and I'll just listen to something that I knew meant something to me from a, from a while back. And it, it puts me back into that moment of, like, being relaxed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, great. And that, I think that's a nice thing. And, and maybe, you know, work that I've done, obviously it sounds like it, it works for you, so maybe there's more people out there that feel the same way. And maybe stuff that I've done touches other people and does that for, for them as well. And, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's nice. It is nice. Great, great. Scott, I got two more. I know you guys are playing tonight, and I thank you for your time. Scott, do you like knowing what tomorrow doesn't bring? Well, we certainly, I'm definitely trying to teach myself that um, I got to live for today because I don't know right. anything about tomorrow yet, except mm -hmm. for the right. schedule yeah. my manager has given me. Other than that, you know, I, I do. I don't know what tomorrow brings, but I try to enjoy the moment, but also I try to plan for tomorrow because I do have things that I have to achieve and I got deadlines and things that are going to happen. But as I go later and, and move through my life, I'm getting real good at designing the days that come. You know, I've got a lot of work that's coming up, which is great. A lot of music. I got a lot of things scheduled that are going on for me. Um, I got projects 
all over the place that are on my schedule that I have to accomplish right now. That's always fun, but you know, it's it, it's super hard to think about tomorrow because, like today, I I haven't gotten through today yet. <laughs> right, right. And it's Great tough, stuff. you know. Yeah. There's there it's the old the old adage. There's just not enough hours in a day anyway. Mm. So, you know, to worry about tomorrow, I, I'm still trying to figure out today. Right? <laughs> Great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Rockenfield from Joe Gansis and uh, everybody at Around the Kid. I cannot thank you enough, brother. It's been 33 years for me personally. Every album, every tour, every drum song, uh, you are very special to me. And I don't want to seem like, you know, oh, Scott Rockenfield, he's my idol. He's this and that. I don't consider you that. I consider you somebody very special in my life that I will always cherish whether we ever meet, it doesn't matter because you've left this mark on your playing, Scott, with me, and it's a very special, special. And I cannot thank you enough, from a drummer to a drummer. Thank you, brother. Well, wow, Joe. Thank you so much, too, man. I sincerely appreciate that, and I certainly have uh, the same type of thing with other people in my life too, where I would say those comments to them. You know, you've touched me. I'm inspired by you as a person or as uh, the work that you do. You know, there's all sorts of different facets, but um, but I but I thank you. And listen, I'm Joe. I'm a work in progress too. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, I'm just going to keep going through life, and I'm going to have as much fun as I can, and I'm going to achieve, and I'm going to fail, and I'm going to just see where it all takes me. But at least I'm I'm just going to try. And it sounds like you're probably going to keep trying and doing and achieving what you want to do in life as well. And we all just hope for the best. And, you know, what can we do, man? Other than that, we just got to enjoy the ride, you know? Just try and enjoy the ride. Scott Rockenfield, at the end of my interviews, I ask my guests one question, and it's an honest answer. Whatever you say, I do not debate it. Scott, on a scale of 1 to 10, rate this interview. Oh, my gosh. Uh well, I would say it's the, one of the most unique interviews that I've ever done. Uh, you know, I don't do a lot of interviews as much as I used to because I've been so busy lately. Um, uh, and it's fun to me because I, it's fun to learn what other people want to talk about. Um, uh, I would rate your interview on a scale of 1 to 10. I'd give it a 8.9. 8.9 is beautiful. Yeah. Scott, what's that's coming up? That's only because, but that's only because – I wasn't prepared for all the answers. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you, you did a great, you did a great job, brother. It was it was my pleasure interviewing you, Scott. What do we got coming up? I know you guys are in uh, Illinois tonight. Uh, what's up with the tour? You know, we uh, play the show tonight, and we got some more shows that are next week uh, uh, in the U.S. Uh, so we for the next month we play shows in the U.S. We go to Europe in August for a month. And then we come home for a week in September, and then we go to Japan, and then we go to Australia, and then we come back home, and then we do an entire six weeks of touring in the United States that takes us all the way to Christmas. Awesome stuff, brother. Guys, go to queensmike.com, <laughs> check out everything. Uh, Scott, it's been a pleasure, man. I hope one day we get a chance to meet, or maybe even next year we could do this again. Uh I wish you all the best, brother. Uh, you're very special in my life as far as drumming, and I will continue to follow your drumming and musical journey in life, brother. Well, listen, that's all good, Joe. And when we do this again, I'm going to interview you. That sounds – all right. I'll, I'll keep you to that. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That way I don't got to think about my answers. <laughs> uh. I'm already, I'm already scared. Oh, uh, Scott Rockefeller, <laughs> thanks so much. Listen, brother, have a great show tonight. I got, I got to ask one little thing. Um, the, the beginning to Eyes of a Stranger, uh, I've done videos on it. I've actually made a name for it. I call it a teeter totter, like a, a seesaw back and forth beat. Was that inspired at all by like Neil Peart, like, like the song Signal, um, a subdivision? Was that a Neil thing, or it just came out of the blue? You know, I actually, uh, I, it was not inspired by, uh, well, I think everything has probably inspired me, whether I know it or not in life. But, you know, 
that actually just happened for me when we were doing our eyes of a stranger. It was just uh, one of those things that it just came to me right then going, I, I need to, I need to play this. I need a kind of a left and right polyrhythm thing going on to drive that part of the song, which is the intro and all sorts of different parts of eyes of a stranger where it keeps reoccurring. And it just felt right to me, but a lot of people ask about that. It's like the simplest thing ever. It just sounds cool. <laughs> you know, God, I'm I'm gonna scare you some more. I think I'm the only person who knows that on the recording it's panned. The right side is the right symbol and the left side if you put the right speaker on, all you'll hear is the right symbol. If you put the left on, all you'll hear is the hi hat. Did you know that and did you do that on purpose? You know, yes. And uh that was one of those things where uh, Jimbo and I, uh, James Barton, who was engineering everything, and he and I have continued to work together for many years. We even do film trailers together now. So, and we talk about that. You know, we did a lot of those things on purpose back then because one, we liked it and we wanted to, and two, we wanted guys like you asking us about it later in life. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and you God, did. Listen, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's a it's a great part and uh. People online, they don't do it right. They use both hands on the ride. So I, I've done some videos, but it's all good. Scott, listen, man, have a great show tonight, uh, and we'll talk to you down the road, brother. That, that sounds great, Joe. Thank you so much, man. Take care. We will see you soon, and thank you to everybody that's listening. All right. Thank. God bless, man. Thank you. Bye-bye. Guys, that was the great Scott Rock and field. Much, much respect.